This is Melissa Dykes reporting for The Daily Sheeple. Can you believe Hillary Clinton is still in this race? It's the number one thing that proves our elections are manufactured. Think about it. Any one of the revelations about Hillary, from the mishandling of classified information on her private email server, or the fact that $6 billion went missing under her tenure as Secretary of State, or even going back to the fact that she pulled a Brian Williams about landing in Bosnia under sniper fire, should have ruined her by now. Others have been ruined for so much less. Remember Howard Dean? But if none of Hillary's 40 years of corruption and criminal behavior has stopped her so far, in a sane, fair world not run by psychopaths, the WikiLeaks revelations should have destroyed her entire political career 10,000 times over by now. On Friday, WikiLeaks dumped another 1,150 of Hillary campaign chairman John Podesta's emails, bringing the total to over 10,000. Here are the top five revelations that came out this week, just this week, which would otherwise have ruined any presidential candidate in the real world and not the twilight zone we're all living in. In no particular order, number one, Hillary and her foundation took money from Saudi Arabia and Qatar, even though she knew Saudi Arabia and Qatar were directly funding ISIS. In a leaked email sent on August 17, 2014 from Hillary to Podesta, who Tyler Durden of Zero Hedge points out was still counselor to President Barack Obama at the time, Hillary admitted that Qatar and Saudi Arabia are, quote, providing clandestine financial and logistic support to ISIL and other radical Sunni groups in the region. And don't forget, Qatar has given up to $5 million to the Clinton Foundation, including a $1 million birthday present to Bill Clinton, and Saudi Arabia has donated a whopping $25 million to it. Pretty amazing when you consider her role in the Middle East as Secretary of State, isn't it? Number two, DOJ collusion with the Clinton campaign. The May 2015 email features Clinton campaign spokesman Brian Fallon admitting the DOJ informed him on an upcoming conference about the lawsuits regarding Clinton's private email server and the mishandling of classified data. This displays an obvious collusion between the DOJ and the Clinton campaign communicating about the ongoing investigation, in addition to Bill Clinton's private meeting with Loretta Lynch on the tarmac in Phoenix, where 24 hours afterward the DOJ announced it would be shielding the Clinton Foundation's emails from legal review and public view until well into a prospective Hillary presidency. Not only that, but other leaks show her own campaign discussing how Hillary will lie about her mishandling of classified information, something she still tries to deny publicly. Number three, and this is actually a two for one, a leaked speech transcript shows that Hillary, who speaks quite differently when talking to councils, corporations, and megabanks like Goldman Sachs versus the rest of us proles, a very us and them kind of thing, referred to the left, her own supporter base, as a quote, bucket of losers. A leaked transcript of her paid speech at Goldman, she said, quote, what we see on the left is in its way more disconcerting. This coalition, a collection of generally underrepresented low social capital individuals has become increasingly networked and increasingly motivated. This group that our analysts are calling the, makes air quotes, bucket of losers, could not only be a significant force in the next election, but could on an outside percentile even win, end quote. Another leaked email speech transcript, this time to National Multi-Housing Council, shows that Hillary knows that she's two-faced. In the 2013 speech, Hillary said, quote, Politics is like sausage being made. It is unsavory, and it always has been that way, but we usually end up where we need to be. But if everybody's watching, you know, all the backroom discussions and the deals, you know, then people get a little nervous, to say the least. So you need both a public and a private position. Two-faced. And she knows it. Number four, in an Orwellian they live nightmare kind of way, Podesta Pal and 7th Chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts, Bill Ivey, discussed how they've all conspired to produce an unaware and compliant citizenry. Ivey said, quote, and as I've mentioned, we've all been quite content to demean government, drop civics, and in general conspire to produce an unaware and compliant citizenry. The unawareness remains strong, but compliance is obviously fading rapidly. This problem demands some serious, serious thinking and not just poll-driven, demographically inspired messaging. Yeah, they actually talk like this when they don't think anyone's listening. Number five, not only did a speech transcript for Goldman Sachs reveal that Hillary admits she's far removed from the middle class, which makes sense for someone who hasn't driven her own car in 20 years and buys $12,000 jackets that look like my grandma's couch from the 1970s, but in another leaked email, Hillary's own campaign knows she has grown to, quote, hate everyday Americans. Hashtag Hillary hates Americans was trending on Twitter Tuesday. The April 19th, 2015 email to Podesta says, quote, I know Hillary has begun to hate everyday Americans, all casually, just like that. Now having said all this, why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? 
See, everyone knows she hates us all. And now you do too.